Hey guys, happy Wednesday. We are gonna continue reading Milkweed and we are now on chapter five. Chapters one and two had titles to them, then chapters three and four did not. And today, chapter five is titled Autumn, which is pretty interesting. Chapter five, Autumn. Soon the airplanes came, adding their waspy buzz to the music. I wanted to see them, but Yuri would not let me go outside. Why can't we go out, I said. They're dropping bombs, he said. I thought, this is what the enemy does. He flies overhead in his airplane. If he sees you in the street below, he reaches out and drops a bomb on your head. I pictured bombs as black iron balls about the size of a sauerkraut kettle. Every day, the sirens screamed to tell us the bombs were coming. We stayed in the cellar and went out at night. That's when I learned the reality of bombs. Beyond the rooftops, the city was on fire. It looked like the sun was stuck. Those were the days and nights. On some nights, we were a city of two. We did not have to snatch. We simply walked into the empty shops of bakers and butchers and grocers and took whatever we pleased and walked out and walked home. We did not run. The street lights were out. Sometimes in the night, we went to the stable. The others were there. Everyone put food into a big pile. We wrestled in the food before we ate it. We clubbed each other blindly with an arm long sausages. Cigarette tips glowed orange in the dark. The horses were gone. The stableman never came shouting anymore. Then one day, the sirens were silent. Yuri and I were home in our basement. Yuri said, stay here, and went outside, and when he came back, he said, let's go. He stuffed a cheese into his pocket and one into mine, and we went up through the barber shop and into the street. We walked fast. I could not keep up. Yuri took my hand and pulled me. People were out. They were heading the way we were going. We passed the black, twisted skeletons of streetcars. Sometimes we had to trot down the middle of the street because the walls of buildings had crumpled and spilled over into the sidewalks. Stacks of sandbags were everywhere. People were hurrying. Machine guns looked to me like praying mantises. Airplanes flew overhead, but no bombs fell from them. I saw someone running. That was all I needed. I could not walk if someone else was running. I broke loose from Yuri. Others were running. It was a race. I didn't know where the finish line was, but I was determined to win. Many had shouted stop, but no one had ever caught me. The street was getting more and more crowded as people poured into it. I streaked through the crowds. I passed other runners. I didn't care how many there were. I would beat them all. I laughed as I ran. Then I was aware of a noise. I felt it before. I heard it. It was deep and grumbling and seemed to come from beneath the streets and there was another sound it was like the beat of a great drum or a thousand drums and the more i ran the louder it became and now the people were mobbed piled like mobbed bricks the spaces between them were gone but i found spaces i always found spaces and i darted through them i could taste the finish line and suddenly i broke free i burst out of the mob i was in nothing but space and the drum beat was deafening i won i shouted and threw my hands up in victory and then something hit me on the ear and i was on the ground and the drum beat was rolling over me i looked up and i saw boots the tallest blackest, shiniest boots I had ever seen, endless columns. For an instant, I saw my gaping face in one of them. I knew what I must be seeing. Yuri had spoken often of them. I gasped aloud, Jack boots. They were magnificent. There were men attached to them, but it was as if the boots were wearing the men. They did not walk like ordinary footwear, the boots. When one stood at tall, stiff attention, the other swung straight out till it was so high I could have walked under it. Only then did it return to earth and the other take off. A thousand of them swinging up as one, falling like the footstep of a single, thousand-footed giant. Leaves leaped. The parade of jackboots went on forever. 
Yuri told me later that the street of the parade was so wonderfully wide, it was not even called a street, but a boulevard. And then I was in the air. A hand had hoisted me up, and I was dangling above the street and returned to my feet. A soldier was smiling down on me. His boots came to my shoulder, and his gray uniform was piped and spangled with silver. The brim of his hat was black and shiny, like the boots. Above it glistened a silver bird that I knew the boys in the stable would have loved to steal. The soldier smiled down at me. He mussed my hair and pinched my cheek. Tiny little Jew, he said. Happy to see us, are you? I'm not a Jew, I told him. I held up my yellow stone. I'm a gypsy. My reply delighted him. Ah, so, a gypsy. Good, very good. And he took me under both arms and lifted me and deposited me back on the sidewalk at the front of the crowd. Good day, little gypsy, he said. And then the smile left his face and he stood tall and the heels of the boots snapped together with a clack and he saluted me and marched off. The march of the jackboots went on and on. After a while, Yuri found me. Look, I said, the jackboots. I thought he would cheer, but he did not. He stood behind me with his hands on my shoulders. I looked at the faces in the crowd. No one was cheering or even smiling. I was surprised. Weren't they thrilled by the spectacle before them? And now the deep grumbling was getting louder and beginning to overcome the drumbeat of the jackboots. I had always looked to the sky for thunder, but this thunder was coming from beneath my feet. The street itself was trembling, and then I saw them. Yuri, I cried. Tanks, he said. Colossal gray, long-snouted beetles. The tanks roared up the boulevard four by four, and the sky shook on its hinges, and I saw at once how silly it had been to try to stop them with ditches and sandbags and machine guns. I clamped my hands over my ears. A single white flower flew out of the crowd. It bounced from the iron flank of a tank and broke into petals. I had no flowers, so I threw my cheese. And that is the end of chapter five. I want us to think about the way um, the boy that we know as Gypsy is reacting to this parade. He seems so happy and excited and he looks at these jack boots and he thinks they're magnificent and wonderful the way that he describes them, but then when he looks to the street of all the other people that are watching the parade, as he's calling it, they don't have the same reaction or the same emotions. I want you to think about that and see if you can make any predictions about what this might mean. And then I will see you tomorrow and we will start chapter six.